so monophasic part 2 covers liquid mixing under liquid mixing we will study the theory the mechanism of liquid mixing and the flow patterns along with this the physical factors which affect liquid mixing will be covered under this section mixing equipment types and clarification and filtration after the mixing has been done shall be covered under this topic first we'll study about liquid mixing theory the theory section of liquid mixing will include one the mechanisms and two the flow patterns if you remember for mechanisms we had also studied uh, during solid solid mixing if you remember they were uh, convective mixing diffuse mixing and shear mixing now we'll talk about liquid liquid mixing theories because here we're talking about monophasic dosage forms laminar kind of uh, mixing is for viscous liquids here the viscous drag causes next layers of the fluid to move this causes mixing of the entire content by stretching okay this is for moderate mixing not very efficient mixing or vigorous mixing next word is the turbulent mixing now turbulent mixing is a very efficient mechanism of mixing in this the turbines or pedals these exert the pressure on the liquid which is next to it okay once it exerts the pressure that that fluid or the liquid around the turbines or the pedal it it starts moving not only in the parallel path like we saw in laminar flow in laminar uh, mixing mechanism but also in erratic and random paths this creates a decrease in pressure okay behind the blades this decrease in pressure circulates the fluid from surrounding area to the agitator during this kind of mixing eddies are produced eddies are produced around the blades this helps in transferring the mass from one layer to another this kind of mixing involves the mixing of fluids at molecular level by diffusion or by thermal motion if you can recall from your physical pharmacy this is related to fick's law dm by dt is equal to minus da or ds into dc by dx where d is the diffusion coefficient dm by dt is the mass transport of mass and a or s is the surface area there is one more kind of mixing that is bulk mixing bulk mixing involves movement of large portion of material from one location to another so it is bulk movement of that liquid it is absorbed when two or more pedals are assembled in a vessel to move adjacent volumes of the fluid in different directions so there are three different flow patterns okay, which are observed in liquid liquid mixing one is tangential then is radial and then is axial now as you can see in the diagram tangential mixing is when the liquid moves parallel to the direction of the impeller if you talk about radial the liquid is discharged towards the uh, towards outside from the impeller okay so the direction in which the liquid is moving away from the impeller is perpendicular to the impeller shaft then if you see in the diagram of axial here the liquid is discharged downwards downwards where towards the bottom of the vessel okay so it, it it spreads along the floor of the vessel it will be even clear if you see the videos in the following slides
Now talking about the physical factors which affect liquid mixing, there are three points. Viscosity, surface tension and wetting. When we talk about viscosity, the liquids which have lower viscosity, they are easy to mix with each other. Easy to mix with each other, easy to filter and easy to transfer from one vessel to another. There is, uh, if you see the liquids which are viscous, okay, the dissolution of drug is not easy in them. It, it, it takes time as well. So drugs are rapidly dissolved if the fluid is less viscous. Okay. The other points are related to biophasic systems where we talk about emulsions or suspensions. So in terms of viscosity in monophasic delivery systems, oral delivery systems, what of what is of your concern is the li liquids with lower viscosity are easy to mix with, each other, mix with each other, easy to filter and easy to transfer from one, one vessel to the other. And the drugs are rapidly dissolved in low viscous fluids. So before starting with the factors which affect filtration, let me just uh, make you imagine two scenarios. Okay, there is one scenario in which you are having a, a liquid dosage form, and uh, there are some solid particles suspended in it. Now you want to filter it. Once you are filtering it, the filtering medium, okay, because of its porous nature, it tends to retain the solid form on the filter cake. When you pass the liquid, some solid particles are retained on the filter cake. Okay, what you get down is the filtrate. Okay, and then you take a scenario of Buckner funnel. So Buckner funnel is made up of uh, porcelain. Sometimes it's made up of glass and plastic, but what we use generally in labs is made up of porcelain. Okay, so on the uh, top of this uh, funnel shaped part, there is a cylinder. Uh, with the perforated disc okay which separates it from the funnel so a filter paper mostly a, a moistened filter paper is placed on the top of this uh, this funnel okay and then the liquid which contains the solid particles from the liquid from which the solid particles have to be filtered is placed on on it okay and then the bottom container in which it is fixed uh, here conical flask is seen in the diagram it is connected with vacuum suction okay so the advantage of this kind of uh, funnel is that the filtration process is very quick okay and this allows the liquid to drain through the filter medium via the force of gravity so these examples will help you understand the factors which affect filtration Number one is permeability constant. Permeability constant or K, it is constant for a particular set of filtration. So any attempt to decrease resistance in filtration, it increases the K or permeability constant. I repeat, any attempt to decrease the resistance of filtration, 
increases the permeability constant. This in turn increases the rate of filtration. Okay, so filter the filter media which will have cleaned and open pores will allow rapid filtration. But as the channels get plugged, okay, the filter cake starts accumulating and the resistance to the filtration increases. So if we make any attempt to decrease this resistance, that is if we increase K, the rate of filtration will increase. Second factor is the morphology of filter cake. The filter cake should be porous. It should not be hard and non-porous. The cake becomes generally compact. It becomes clogged during filtration. This in turn slows down the filtration. The incorporation of filter aids in the slurry, it may, it you know, it uh, maintains channels for filtration with high rate. But when fine particles fill these channels, the rate of filtration decreases. Therefore, beforehand only wet agglomeration of such particles is done so that we can maintain the rate of filtration. Third factor which affects rate of filtration is the area of filter bed. More is the area of filter bed, bed efficient is the filtration. It is directly proportional. Okay, so if you see, uh, we use sometimes fluted paper for filtration, the fluted funnel. Why we use it? Because after fluting, the surface area increases. Surface area increases, therefore, rate of filtration also increases. We, we get effective area more for filtration. Next factor which affects filtration is the pressure difference. The rate of filtration can be increased by applying positive pressure to the liquid which is being filtered. Okay, This pressure can be applied in four ways. First is gravity, then is positive pressure. Positive pressure as in um, uh, if, we, if we apply pressure on the slurry okay, which is on the top, it increases the rate of filtration. Then vacuum, the vacuum pump which is attached to the receiver as we had seen in the Buckner funnel, a vacuum pump is attached to the uh, receiver. This creates pressure difference ac across the filter. Since the working under reduced pressure minimizes chance of explosion, this technique is widely used for lab scale filtration. So you can very commonly see, see it in uh, synthesis labs where you make new pharmaceutical, uh, uh, synthesizing new pharmaceutical drugs. Okay, so while filtering out, while it's purification, this is commonly used. Then a centrifugal force. It is used to concentrate and collect insoluble matter from the non-filterable. The next factor which affects the rate of filtration is the thickness of the filter cake. When we are filtering a slurry, okay, when we are fil or we here we say we are filtering some uh, liquid dosage form which has some solid particles so as you the filtration filtration process will progress a cake starts accumulating okay as the cake starts accumulating the thickness of the filter cake increases and thus the this the filtration rate decreases okay so what is ideal is uh, that the cake if present okay it should be it should be a very thin deposit if the thickness increases, it is beneficial to remove the cake continuously or use the slurry after time we decantation. Then the last factor is viscosity. Viscosity of the vehicle should be low. Lower is the viscosity, faster is the rate of filtration. Viscous is the fluid or viscous is the slurry, slower is the rate of filtration. So how can you reduce the viscosity if it is high? Either you can dilute it or you can increase the temperature but increasing the temperature is not suitable in all the cases okay sometimes it might even degrade the product so dilution is a good alternative which is used okay so this uh, increase if you dilute it the viscosity decreases and the rate of filtration increases So, uh, the theory of filtration is given by, uh, the theories rather, is given by various equations. 
the most popular one which we are discussing here is the Darcy's equation. Darcy's equation says that the rate of filtration, okay, that is V and sometimes it's written by uh, dt by dt also, it is directly proportional to the area of filter bed A, the pressure difference across the filter medium and filter K, that is delta P, uh, the permeability constant and it is inversely proportional to the thickness of filter cake and viscosity of the fluid that is eta so now if you even if you remember this equation you can always remember the factors which affect the rate of filtration you need to understand what is delta p here delta p is the pressure difference which we are sorry during the factors affecting okay so let us say we have a funnel in which we have uh, introduced a slurry the slurry of uh, uh, and liquid and solid particles is there okay and uh, so the pressure which is there on the top of that slurry and the bottom if you if you find out the difference that is the delta p okay let us say the pressure is p1 at the top in the funnel and at the bottom near the hole is p2 so p1 minus p2 is the delta p so this is the darcy's equation that v is equal to ka delta p by eta l Now next term very important term is filter media. First we will study about filter media then we will study about filter aid. So what is filter media? Filter media is that is that surface on which the solids are deposit, deposited in a filter. Okay. So what are the ideal properties? How an ideal filter media should be? First it should be inert. Okay. It should not react. Uh, to and uh, it should have sufficient mechanical strength to bear maybe sometimes you are applying the pressure also so it should it should be able to bear it then it should be capable of delivering a clean filtrate at a suitable production rate production rate here is the the rate at which we want the filtrate or we want uh, the uh, particles at the surface it should retain the solids without plugging at the start of filtration then not that it should be inert, it should also not absorb dissolved material. Sterile filtration imposes a special requirement on the pore size. This pore size must not exceed the dimension of the bacteria or spores. The most commonly known filter media is the filter paper. So what you commonly see in the laboratory is the Wattman filter paper. You get it in various grades depending on the pore size and hence the particle size it can filtrate now what is the limitation the limitation of filter paper as a filter medium is that its absorption capacity as well as its mechanical strength so if you see if you keep on filtering it over time it it sometimes uh, gets torn also so this may shed fibers in the filtrate this is one limitation of filter paper then is cotton wool and filter cloth cotton wool is uh, used but only for coarse particles not fine particles because uh, it shades fibers again into the filtrate generally a wet cotton plug is used over the funnel the filter cloth it could be synthetic or it could be made up of cotton it is preferred over the cotton wool because it comes in first it comes in various uh, strengths porosity okay they have a larger surface area if you compare amongst the two the absorbing property of synthetic cloths has lesser absorbing property okay uh, the the nylon cloth is chosen as filter for large scale manufacturing only then comes the fine muslin fine muslin cloth is uh, nothing but what you commonly call as cheese cloth okay so this is uh, it comes in various pore sizes of course and uh, this is used in pre-filtration okay before you are going for fine filtration it's a, just to separate the coarse particles to use fine muslin other than that is glass wool and asbestos so both glass wool and asbestos are used for the filtration of corrosive liquids glass wool uh, are fine fibers of glass okay so other than corrosive liquids glass wool also is used for filtration of strong acids and alkalis now asbestos is asbestos uh, it is nothing but 
impure uh, magnesium silicate and fusel gel okay so these are together built on a supporting material okay and uh, supporting material in such a way that you get uh, you get uh, sheets asbestos uh, sheets of various porosity grades okay and then they are used for filtration of corrosive liquids then comes the membrane filters membrane filters are most commonly used for sterilization these are the membranes which you have also seen in the class while uh, uh, which i had uh, explained during the explanation of trans diffusion cell okay so they may be made up of uh, polymers such as cellulose acetate or nylon cellulose nitrate okay and they have varying pore sizes whatever is your requirement so these are most uh, commonly used for uh, while we are preparing in lab uh, the uh, you know parenterals and even while you are uh, doing some analytical studies where you need to filter out the aliquots from some analytical anal uh, analytical process then they are mechanically very strong related to any you know watman filter vapor or any uh, asbestos so uh, another advantage is um, uh, there is no contamination of filtrate because there is no retention only of the solution so that way uh, there is no contamination now let's talk about the filter rates we have spoken about filter media before now it is filter rates so the objective of filter rate is to prevent the medium from being blocked okay or even if the quick cake is formed the cake is porous so that the filtration keeps on taking place the filter rate forms a surface deposit the surface deposit screens out the solids and also pre prevents any kind of plugging of the filter medium now what are the characteristics of an ideal filter aid one it should be if if the cake is formed it should be porous it should not be dense then it should have low specific gravity so that it remains suspended in the liquids it should be free from any kind of impurity it should be chemically inert it should not dissolve in the uh, in the liquid which is being filtered okay and therefore it should be recoverable also if it is not being filtered it can be it should be recoverable so that it can be reused also if it is not blocked then the limitation is sometimes the colors are also absorbed while we are filtering the colors in the uh, dosage forms are also absorbed then uh, principles such as alkaloids these are absorbed on filter rates very rarely it also happens that these become the source of contamination contamination by soluble iron salts which promote provoke degradation of sensitive ingredients examples of uh, filter aids are kissel gel okay then uh, uh, aluminum silicate cellulose asbestos talc charcoal now in practicality how do we use this filter aids there are two ways one way is that we form a pre coat over the filter medium how do we use it how do we do it uh, we prepare a suspension of this filter aid okay and then we filter the suspension of the filter aid through the filter medium this is what we call pre coating technique another way is you just take 0.1% to 0.5% of filter it you add it to the slurry which has to be filtered so this slurry is recirculated through the filter until a clear filtrate is obtained okay now during these processes that is a uh, using filter aids for filtration either you have a low flow rate or fast flow rate low flow rate will be achieved when fine grade of filter aids are being used If you are using coarse grade of filter gates, a fast flow rate can be achieved. 